Welcome to a very beautiful and sunny morning here in Hue, Vietnam. And if you watched the last video, you'd know that I just drove from Da Nang to Hue via the Hai Van Pass and arrived here yesterday evening. And I am at the famous Hue abandoned water park right now, so you probably recognize that dragon's head behind me. And if you're wondering how to get here, it's around 20 minutes outside of Hue city center. You can either rent a bike like I did, or you can pay someone to bring you here and guide you. And I actually videoed how to get in because you do have to bribe someone. So this is how it went. So ready. Claws on this dragon are absolutely huge. Look at it. It's nuts. You can go inside the dragon's butt. I think the dragon's butt was being used for storage. Well, look, <laughs> you can see the inside of the skeleton. I was going to try and go out here and film, but I realized that that's not going to happen. But then I looked up. And you can get up into the dragon's head. I don't know how, let's find out. Wrong way, but it's okay, because Jesus loves you. How the hell do I get up there? Like, I honestly can't find it. Maybe I have to go all the way down to the bottom again, and there's like a stairs that goes all the way up through the middle. We'll keep searching. Okay, so I'm back outside. These are the steps. We just came down that lead inside. These are the steps that I took up last time. There's some more steps over here. Let's try these. Oh, this looks promising. The bones have reappeared. We must be getting close. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's a long way up. Oh, I think this is the beard. <laughs> the dragon's beard. It's a good name of a band. We made it into the mouth. This water park is insane. I'm very happy to come explore this place. I'm quite enamored with abandoned places. I love exploring abandoned places. It was opened in 2004, but then it closed in 2006. So it's been closed for 16 years now. It was actually re-bought again in 2013 for a second development that never went ahead. So if you do come here, make sure you wear proper shoes, not flip-flops because there's glass everywhere. Tons of graffiti, tons of glass a really cool thing to explore and because it's made of stone like nothing's fallen through apart from the glass nothing's fallen through and fun fact that i read actually in this lake they found crocodiles a while back like quite a while ago there's not any crocodiles in there anymore they moved them to somewhere safer but imagine coming here to visit an abandoned water park and you just see crocodiles basking in the water i think this water park does have more to explore other than just this iconic dragon building so i'm gonna go back downstairs now and go see what else i can find Got a bit busy in the dragon's mouth towards the end there. People started turning up, which is pretty cool. But I know there's also some water slides here as well, as well as an amphitheater. I can see the amphitheater, it's over there. But I tried to look for the water slides on the drone. Couldn't find them. So I'm thinking about just taking the bike, doing a lap around and seeing if we can find them. So I'll show you if we do. When I got here, my bike was the only one here. Now there's quite a few people. I got here at like 9 a.m. So I thought I was gonna be pretty late, but Apparently that's okay. I was just riding around the back of the dragon and I came across this fountain. Not as interesting as the dragon, but worth showing. It's a beautiful mermaid. And now we've made it to the other side of the dragon, but there's a sign here that says there's something 50 meters in this direction. So let's go see if we can find it. We have two options here. I'm definitely gonna check out both. And then if you keep going past the fountain, you come to a really nice bridge. I'm not sure there's anything the other side of it, because if I remember rightly when I put the drone up, it's just farmland, but you know, it's kind of nice. We found the slides. There's a lot more people in this area. <laughs> I'd say there's probably at least 20 people here at the moment. The guy, the security guards over here is whistling at someone. I reckon they've come in without paying. And he's come to search for them, so make sure you pay. I think I want to walk up this slide here. Let's do it. Let's go find out what's at the top. You can't go up that, but it feels very unstable anyway, so I will. More stairs. 
made it to the top of the slides. Looks like this one was straight down and open. This one was the one we tried to walk up, but it's like open and goes around like this. This one is straight down and closed. Oh no, it does go around like this. Although I don't think those slides would have been anything special when this was open, to be honest. But like in a world where we have huge water slides, I mean, check out my video at Waterbomb in Bali. He's a puny. All right, I think that's enough exploring for the day. I am incredibly thirsty and incredibly hot. And I haven't eaten yet, and it's now 11.15. Let's get back on this bad boy and head for dinner. Dinner? Breakfast? Lunch-ish. Something like that. Let's go. Okay, we made it to the first place. It's the tomb of Emperor Ming Mang. And actually, we're gonna be seeing a lot of tombs today, a lot of mausoleums, because like I said earlier, this was the imperial capital. So they have a lot of dead emperors here, which built mausoleums for themselves while they were still alive, and now they're buried here. It was a bit confusing to get here. It's pretty close to the water park, but you head down like a road that is tree-lined, it looks beautiful, and then suddenly, bam, you hit the highway. <laughs> and I think the highway is pretty new, and you only go on it for like 500 meters, and you come off again, but Google Maps starts to go crazy because I think it's new, so it doesn't really know what to do. But on the side of the road, I found a sign that says, stop here, bikes and motorbikes. But let's see what the first tomb of the day's like. Oh, I see more bikes. Yeah, where I park, guys, is definitely not the official entrance. So if you don't want to stop there, you don't have to. You can probably keep going. And this is the official entrance. Thank you. It was 150,000 to get in, which I feel like is a lot, but it looks huge. Definitely underestimated how big this place is. I thought it was just like one tomb, but it's not. It's basically a park. There's one big tomb and then lots of smaller structures around the edge of a massive lake, which is within the walls of that sign said a 2,000 meter or two kilometer wall, but it's very well preserved and it looks beautiful so far. Probably what that 150,000 entry ticket is. Preservation, hopefully. I probably should have picked up like a guide. There's audio guides available here or booked a tour because I'm just walking around this beautiful place with absolutely no idea what anything is. I mean, look, that's so cool. But I don't know why it's there. It's honestly built and preserved very well. And it's really symmetrical. Makes it look really nice. There's a couple of other like individual groups and then one big tour group. But other than that, this place is empty. It's a very colourful gate and very well decorated. I mean, look at these lanterns. I bet they look really nice with some candles in them. I know this is typically Vietnamese, but it's definitely giving me like Chinese, Japanese vibes as well. I mean, I think it's the bonsai trees doing the Japanese for me. It's beautiful though, it's absolutely stunning. This is a map, so we come in here, and then we went over that big temple thing through the gate. And then we're in here at the moment, but there's more. And there's buildings all the way around the lake as well. Honestly, don't know if I'm gonna have time to see it all, if I want to go other places today. Oh, this is the spot. It's so hot today, like so hot. The inside of this temple, the main temple that was built in 1843 is beautiful it's what i ever expected from like east asian architecture or in this case southeast asian architecture but the pillar work the painting the woodwork the wood carving the ceilings look amazing it's very well restored and look at this how beautiful is all of this if you're going to come and spend probably quite a while here i'm probably only going to spend 45 minutes here because i want to see other things but if you have more time in way the 150,000 entry like almost eight dollars probably worth it to be honest this was written in 1820 yeah, that's cool. Back out in the sun in the heat. And there's two more buildings, this one and this one. There's nothing in them, they look pretty cool though. And there's some girls doing a photo shoot in the gate, but I need to go through the gate because I want to see the rest and then move to the next place. Oh my God, there's even more. Beauty everywhere, this place is massive. I wonder where the actual mausoleum is though. I haven't seen that yet. I'm gonna take the left bridge instead of the middle bridge. Now this is the next building, but this thing over here looks old and huge. I wanna go see what that is. Now this pillar is very old. There's no information sign. I can't tell you how old and I haven't seen anything about it on Google. It looks like you can feed the fish as well. And this part was built in 1841. I wonder what's up there. God, it just keeps going. This place is absolutely massive. Check this out. 
there's another one of those old pillars on the other side as well. This place is completely symmetrical, like completely symmetrical. It really makes me happy. Finally made it to where Ming Mang is buried and he's behind those steel doors all the way up there. I mean, there's been a dead guy in there for, you know, 150 years. So I'm gonna head back to the entrance, grab my bike, grab a drink and go to the next. It's actually another tomb we're going to next. I think there's like four or five different tombs here in Hue. We are now at Two Duke's Coombe, and this is the tomb of a guy that ruled between 1848 and 1883. And this tomb was constructed within three years between 1864 and 1867. So as you're getting close to the tomb, there's a bunch of like women running these calves outside and they're all trying to get you to come in going, free parking, free parking. You can drive past them and just park next to the ticket booth, which is what I did. You can see my bike next to the ticket booth, but a woman still came over and gave me a thing from the other side of the road. So I'm pretty sure she's gonna try and get me to buy a drink. I'm going to refuse and she's not gonna be happy, so <laughs> we'll see what happens there. I already have water, so I don't need another drink. This one's wall is a little bit smaller. It's about 500 meters shorter than the last one. And the same as the last one, it's got 50 constructions arranged in two main areas. So this is gonna be another big one that I'm probably not gonna be able to see all of. But again, it starts off beautiful. Look at this. I have no idea if we're allowed to like actually go inside of these ruins. They look pretty old. I don't wanna erode them if like, you know, we're not allowed. Looks like a really nice garden of some sort, or courtyard. Looks good, but it looks like the last one as well. It just must be that Nian dynasty style. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, it's not as grand as the last two mausoleum place we went to, but it's clean. It's like cleanly made. The bonsai trees again. Gotta give it that Japanese feel. Again, very cleanly made, very like smooth finish, but not as extravagant as the last one. This one was built before, then maybe the next one copied the design, but made it better. Maybe. I think you could go in there and like hire clothes for photos. Could be good for an Instagram shoot. What seems to be a common theme with these tombs is like place of worship, I think, and then like some sort of storage building. Another storage building or like smaller places of worship in a courtyard with a three-door gate. This is the same as the last one. It's still beautiful, but it's the same layout. So I don't know if you can see it because of the sun, but here's the layout. If I could get the drone up, that's what it would look like. Although the layout is very similar to the last one, I definitely prefer the grounds to this one. The grounds here are much more beautiful. Like the lake is amazing. There's buildings on the lake. The last one's still really nice, but I prefer this one. But what takes a point away is actually this one's quite a lot busier. <laughs> the thing that stands out the most to me at this mausoleum though is the trees, the pathways and the lake itself, like the bridges and the walls around the lake. They're really, really beautiful here. It'll be nice to come and like bring a picnic <laughs> maybe another time not only is this one busier with tour groups there's school groups as well maybe school groups go to the other one but the other one just seemed more peaceful this one has kids found another one of those big giant stone tablet grave stone things I don't know what this one's for either but it's got Chinese written on it I need to go find the tomb of this guy and this is like the pillar in the other one but less destroyed. This is Bhutan and Huangkung. I think that's the same name as the last place. But this is the wall surroundings of the royal crypt where the emperor's relics are kept on top of the Huangkung. Is thatch that or stone building? This is where his relics are kept, but not where his body's kept. Just have a quick peek and then continue to see if we can find a tomb. Okay, we found a tomb. This is the tomb of Empress Le Tian An, Emperor Tuduk's first wife. Out of his many, many wives. But I don't have time to be concerning myself with first wives. I need to find the Emperor's tomb and Sharpish because I also need to be back in Hui in 20 minutes and it's a 20 minute ride. <laughs> so I think these are the reconstructed steps and these are the original steps. They are so old. I think I might have to just call it quits and give up on the tomb finding. Right, one more building, just here. Let's see if it's the two. Oh, 
The door's open. Ain't no one leaving the doors open on an emperor's tomb. Okay, right, I'm gonna have to give up on this tomb finding. I need to be back in Hue in 15 minutes. Um, tonight I'm catching a sleeper bus for 15 hours to Hanoi. I'm gonna arrive at like 6, 7 a.m. and I have no idea what I'm gonna do that time in the morning yet. But out of these two mausoleums, pick one or both. I mean, if you have the money and the time to do both, they are different despite the design and the architecture being similar. The layout is completely different and it's worth coming to see both. If you can just pick one, I'm, oh, it's hard. I'm a sucker for symmetrical, so the other one would be better. But actually, these grounds are absolutely stunning. Decide on your own, whichever one you think looks better in my video. But if you like this video, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and it would mean so much to me if you come along with me on my journey. I'm halfway through my Vietnam trip now. I've got about another week and a half left. And then after that, we're going somewhere else.